Even so, the and only... We are uh, two and a half minutes away from that happening. So over to Cape Canaveral, to Kieran, for the build-up to the launch itself. Yes, Mike. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are a couple of things to look out for, I should say, in the last few seconds before liftoff. Two minutes now before the launch. When the main engines fire, the shuttle will stay clamped to the launch pad, despite their enormous power trying to wrench it away. Something like the power of 23 Hoover dams, according to the maker. Now, launch control wants to be sure they're working properly first, but they know as well that as long as the shuttle is held down, the engines are going to force the whole stack to bend or twang with the strain. Now, that'll only be a few inches. They'll fill it in the cockpit, but we won't see it from here. It'll take a few seconds to ease back into position, and that's when they'll light the solid boosters. They'll reach full power in just half a second. That's when they'll explode the hold down bolts, and with all those engines firing together, we're going to see one heck of a lot of smoke and flames. As John Young said, it's going to clear the tower a lot quicker than the old Apollo ships. And you can imagine the noise that six million pounds of thrust is going to make as well. T minus one minute, 20 seconds. And because of that noise, by the way, that's why the engineers are going to pour 300,000 gallons of water onto the pad 10 seconds before liftoff. That's literally to dampen the sound, to try and prevent too much sound vibration bouncing back off the pad and damaging the launch vehicle. T minus one and counting. Firing system for the sound suppression water will be armed. Uh, just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. T minus 45 seconds and counting. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. The development flight instrumentation recorders are on. T-minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T-minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant sense sequencer start. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15, 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. America's first space shuttle. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. What a fantastic sight. Now at the speed of sound. And they're cheering and clapping here all over the Cape. Bombia, who's in your gold throttle up? Your throttle up. Well, the astronauts have now passed the 19 mile mark. They can't use their ejection seats after this point if they should need to. I'm sure they won't. Roger, on the nice ride. You're laughing a little bit. So Any second now, the boosters will run out of fuel, and we should see them go. Columbia, you're negative The van call up says uh, that uh, Columbia, the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Boosters are shut down. Columbia, your goal for SRB step. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB step confirmation. Roger on the step. Columbia. And there go the solid rocket boosters. Forced away from the path of the shuttle by tiny rocket motors in the side of the two boosters, 
They, even without power, their momentum is going to carry them another 10 miles up before they parachute down to the Atlantic. Incidentally, it's going to take twice as long to get down as it did for them to get up. Kieran, thank you. You, you and uh, Kennedy have done a fine job. We've lost the pictures of the SRBs, unfortunately.